welcome back to a video, another video. In this video, we're going to do something a little different. Um, I'm not normally just in Photoshop, but in this case, I'm just in Photoshop. Uh, there's a lot of applications to what we're going to do here. Um, but we're, what we're going to ultimately do is replace this sky. And like, of course, there's a lot of different ways we can replace this sky. I've, uh, we've covered replacing skies in other videos, but uh, this is a little different uh, because it's going to be more automatic. It's a, it's a newer feature within uh, Photoshop. It's I would say it's very underutilized because it's really powerful, uh, but this is not specifically on Twinmotion, Inkscape, or anything. It just It's a rendering. I have a rendering that I happen to do in Twinmotion, but I want to replace the sky because I didn't, for some reason, bother to add clouds. I didn't really care or whatever. It didn't really matter to me at the time. Um, because I needed to quickly export it, but it, now I kind of want to beef it up a bit. I want to add a sky. I want to make it look better. And so how can we do this? Well, before we get into it, I do want you to demolish that like button if you, in fact, learn something, because that's kind of why you're here. I hope that's why. Uh, and maybe you just end up liking the video. That's when you demolish it as well. Okay, getting into it now, we want to replace this guy, and we want this to be automatic. I'm not trying to go in here and select every little piece and, you know, and try and deal with... Uh, replacing it that way. I, I can do that, and that's what we covered in another video. And that might be because you want a specific sky or something. You need something really specific. Now, if you don't need something as specific as what we are about to see, then let's do that. And so in the edit, assuming you have you know relatively updated Photoshop, um, within the last few months this came out, so I, I do have Creative Cloud, and so that's something you should have and should be aware of if you want to use something like this. Uh, but in Edit, we can come all the way down to Sky Replacement, and <laughs> I'm it's basically that easy. And I'm not saying that that's it, we're done, but immediately, look what happens. Like, we, are, we already have a Sky Replaced. Now, I do want to show you there's a couple of issues that we're going to have to deal with, and this is going to be a case-by-case -case basis. Depends on the image. Um, I can uncheck this preview, and we can see that, well based on some of the values of the sky here and how white it is, it's kind of clashing or getting really close to some of the whites and grays within my building. And specifically up here above this curtain wall where the structure is coming in, if I choose preview, I could see that, well, that's, <laughs> that's now being replaced with sky. And that's not exactly what we want. So how do we deal with this? Well, I can, of course, move the sky around, which is actually nice. In this case, it actually, it actually is... Uh, there's an ocean back there, but I don't care about that. I just want to see the sky. And so this looks good, uh, but I can further edit the sky here by choosing this brush. And this brush is going to allow me to either add sky, so I can literally come in here and add more sky to where my image would be. Um, but I'm actually worried about removing it, obviously. We need to see the structure back here. And so you could see my brush has got a plus, which means I'm going to add sky. Or I can hold alt and it becomes a minus. Or we can click up here, minus. And so this is really where I can make this bigger or smaller, of course, like I always am able to do. I want my opacity to be maybe to be close to 100 or 100 because I really just want to make sure that this is done in one swoop. And I can, of course, I, I want to be able to see this again, and this is looking pretty good. Maybe I don't want it quite 100 because I'm not as precise as it thinks I am. And so this is good. I'm getting my structure to come back here. You know, and I, I'm fairly happy with this because I'm, my structure is now coming back, uh, but I still have the nice looking sky in the background that I really want to see. And so with that, you know, we're, we can really start to move on to the rest of the sky settings. And maybe you won't have to do this, but if you're lucky, depending on some of the values that you get by default or some of the con, maybe you have enough contrast and you have to worry about this. Um, so great. We're at this point now. Maybe we don't like this guy. Well, I can change this drop down, and I have tons of different here. Like, all, look at all these skies. And when, as soon as I click it, I get a new sky. Don't like that. Click this one. Try literally try another one. Some of these are going to look great. Some of these are really not going to work well with this type of scene that you're going for. And that's perfectly fine. Just kind of know that you can change these around. Like this one looks really good. You know, I'm not going for anything too crazy, too specific. Uh, but I like these. Uh, of course, we have more than just that. We, we can look at spectacular, you know, <laughs> not all of these are going to apply, but we have some nice looking skies here. This is really easy, really, I'm just clicking a button, <laughs> uh, so that's really nice. Now, the thing to be aware of also is that not all of these are going to apply with the lighting in your scene. In this case, I, 
I'm in the middle of the day, I have minimal clouds, so a dark and stormy setting isn't going to work that well. While it might look good, it's going to clash, and that's not exactly what I'm looking for. I can probably get away with some of these here, but not even that. Um, and of course, I'm definitely not going to get away with these sunsets, but these are really nice looking. Now, this may not be everything you want, of course, because there's probably more that you want to see. There's probably different types of sky that would look better. Um, so we can come up to the gear here, and we can import skies. We can import from images, and if we do that, we're, we're just going to end up at all these different pictures. We have all these different formats, so you can use any sort of image to do that. Um, but specifically, we can use from sky presets. And this means maybe you've made a sky. I'm not going to cover that in this video, but a, a .sky file, um, which is basically just going to add more. And I'll show you where you can get more here right now. We can maybe we want to rename it, delete it, whatever. None of this really matters to me, but what really does matter is get more skies. <laughs> like, I just want more, you know? Well, if we want to get more and you actually have a Creative Cloud, cloud account, this is going to be really simple. So it's going to take us to where we can get more skies. And you'll notice... As we scroll down, we can see we have sunsets. This might be more than what we have here, but we already have some sunsets. We already have some spectacular. Uh, but then we have night skies, which is really nice. Blue skies, which I think we have as well. Uh, storms, which is nice. You know, th there's more here. And so download these if you want. These are going to be some easy defaults that you have. And if you want to get to that, just click the gear and then choose get more skies. That's very simple. So let's say we choose one that we're pretty happy with. And of course, we're going to use some sort of blue sky. It's going to have to be that just because uh, the type of scene that we're working with, it's going to make the most sense. And, you know, maybe this looks good. We're happy with this. Um, we can all, we can really, you can do a lot here. You can do not a lot here. And so at this point, maybe I'm happy with this nine times out of 10. Maybe this is enough. Although I'm seeing here that I need to bring more of my structure back in, which is you know very simple to do, but obviously something that I should have done before. And so that looks even better. Um, but I can shift the edge here, which if you're familiar with selecting, like select, making a selection, you can shift the edge that way. And we're, all this means is that we're going to lose some more of our sky or it's going to start overlapping more of what we have. And so I would typically leave this at zero just because I'm going to adjust this to what I want it to be based on what I'm taking out, removing or adding back as far as the brush goes. And then I can fade this edge. Maybe I want it to make a look, you know, uh, it's going to help in some of these less crisp areas if we want to fade it in or out. We've got sky adjustments. Of course, this is, we, we know what brightness is. Um, this is going to help whenever you're trying to match the tone. And so maybe I want this to be a little bit brighter just because my, my scene is fairly bright. Um, but then the temperature, which is nice. I can literally start to get this looking more like my scene, whether it's more blue, more yellow, uh, changing the temp that way. And of course, the scale, which is nice. I can really beef this up if I want to see some giant clouds, but it doesn't make sense to do that. Um, I probably want to keep this down closer to 100 and, and just kind of know that these are images. So when I put this at 50, I'm going to only see half the image. So I'm typically going to keep these more at 100 because um, and maybe only bring it up and not really work it down. Um, I can flip this, of course, if I want to change the look that way. I don't really. Uh, the foreground adjustments are kind of interesting because my lighting mode is set to multiply. So um, multiply, what it does is it removes all of the white values. Whereas if I change it to screen, it's going to move all the dark values. I'm going to really get a different look. Um, it's just going to lighten up. I, mean, I typically want to keep this on multiply so I can just kind of push the sky to the background. Um, my lighting adjustment, I can move this up and down and we can see it does get brighter based on kind of the lighting, which uh, might help, you know, give you, it might help those middle grounds as far as getting the sky to fit more within the scene based on the lighting that you're getting. And then of course the color, if for some reason you want this to match a little more, you just kind of know that these are affecting the actual rendering, not so much the sky. So that that's something you need to be aware of as well. So just uh, know that whenever you're affecting these values. And then my output finally is either a new layer or a duplicated layer. It doesn't matter. I'd like to use new layer because I could, I can choose to hide it or not. I mean, like all of this is going to show up within one new layer, which is fantastic. I can hide this or not, and I'm just back to my new image. Just don't have to worry about it. Or I can just make another one, try it out. You know, all things that I'd, I might want to do that way. So that's really nice. And honestly, that's kind of it for this video. We've looked at uh, editing the sky in, in the form of replacing it really quickly. And there's a ton. Um, you can always add your more, add more um, by yourself. Uh, just find an image of a sky. And the 
artificial intelligence of that tool is going to place it where it ought to go, which is kind of the point here. Really, it's it's helping us get past the point of having to select it ourselves and then replace it ourselves. It's kind of doing all of that for us at one time, which is fantastic. That's easy. That's what we want to do. And so that will do it for this video. If you happen to learn something, which, I mean, hopefully you did, it's very simple, very simple tool, but I think really effective. I'm going to start using this a lot more just because I can get really quick skies that look really good, and I can get it to match my scene really easily without selecting anything. It's just a mess to try to deal with that, especially around all these trees and things like that. So if you did happen to learn something, demolish that like button. It tells me that you did. They might have learned something. And I will see you in the next video. Have a wonderful day, and thank you very much for watching.